Let's just talk about why why payments matter at like a very at a very high level. A company will do everything, everything they can that, to build a business. They're they're gonna have marketers. They're gonna have they're gonna hire staff. They're gonna build these huge buildings. They're going to make sure that. Uh, they're going to build the, the the world's best website and have the best UI designers come in. And, you know, like you know, let's 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 A/B test everything. Let's make sure that things things are working. None of that matters if the payment at the end of the day doesn't go through. If when that customer comes and they have their card number, if they cannot take that card number and turn it into money being sent to the merchant, then it was all for nothing. That's uh, it's actually the linchpin in the business is making sure that this works. Let's talk about VGS and vault and like where the vault provider comes in in that ecosystem. VGS it is entirely based around making sure that you always have maneuverability, making sure that if one provider is down, you have access to the data so that you can send it to another provider, so that when you need to make money, you can make money. So let's uh let's just start drawing this out. We have Travis. This is this is the customer. In a situation where you aren't collecting that data, where a merchant isn't collecting that card data themselves, this card number, you know, through an online, through an online store is going to go directly to a PSP. That, that's a payment service provider. Now, these payment service providers do not always authorize that payment. They may give you a bad auth rate for that, for that card. When the customer provides this data over to that PSP, it could be a valid customer, but if it fails, that's, that's something called a soft decline. They'll, they'll decline the card. It's like, Oh, didn't go through. Okay. Well, I'm going to go move on. It's 2 a.m. I'm instinct buying this thing, uh, which I have done more times than I want to admit. And, uh, oh, payment failed. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just going to go to bed. I'm, I'm going to move on to the next thing, or I'm going to go buy it from a different online store that I have also done. So. 411, this card number goes to the PSP. It fails. Maybe they're down. Maybe they're some networking glitch happened, or maybe they just like some fraud check flagged you for uh, incorrect reasons. How is this solved? This, this PSP is acting on behalf of the merchant here. What the merchant can do, rather than sending the data to the PSP directly, the merchant can collect that card data and they can use it so that they can have PSP one. They can, and then they can also have PSP two. They can add in a second processor. So this is going to do multiple things. And this is called payment orchestration, by the way. So when that, when that, when they collect that card data, they want to send it to PSP one. If this fails, whereas before this just meant I'm going to bed and I didn't, I didn't send any money to that merchant. So that this payment fails, they can take that card number and they can send it over to PSP two. So this is maneuverability. That's what, that's what they have all of a sudden. And let's say that their auth rates with PSP one with one specific issuing bank was, you know, 90%. And then when they use this, mer if they retry with this other PSP, all of a sudden it's 95%. So that you'd, and th these are just rough numbers, but you, you can see if you can increase your authorization rate by 5%, that's a huge gain, huge for these, for a company who's making, let's say billions of dollars a year. So where does VGS fit? That's the, that's the question. That's the conversation we were having. It's as soon as the merchant collects this card data, they have to protect that, that PCI. They have to make sure, or they have to pr protect that that payment card information. There's a whole set of regulations to make sure that the way they are storing your card number is secure. The networks have a global. They have they have released PCI as a mandate for how you have to store card data, and it's a very tedious process to make sure that it your systems are always secure, and that has to be renewed every year. You you have to go through the audit. So where VGS fits is we will come in. We will sit. Right here, when you are collecting the data, and we will intercept the card number, and technically the card number and the CVV, and we will turn that into tokens. So we have this, and we turn it into TOK1, and that this token represents the card number. 
And now you can store that without having to be PCI compliant because you trusted the vault provider to be VGS co to be compliant. Now, you still want to send it over to PSP1 and PSP2. So when you have this data on your server, you don't have the original data anymore. You, you This PSP cannot process the payment with this token. So what you have to do is you send it through VGS again. You know, let's just draw here, VGS. So you send it through VGS again, and we reveal the card number over to the PSP. This is using using different HTTP proxies. So we proxy it as it's coming in, convert it into a token, and then when we're sending it out, and we as in the merchant, the merchant proxies it through VGS, and then they so that they collect the data that's not PCI sensitive, and then they send it over to PSP1 through VGS th through the proxy, and we reveal the data over to the over to the PSP in this case. These PSPs can process the payment with the original card data that the customer had. So it's a direct only in the the only vendors who who touch the card number are the only parties as the customer VGS and the PSPs, but the merchant is safe. That's at a very high level how you can build out a payment orchestration system. The reason you do this, you're going to get higher auth rates. Also, if this PSP is controlling your entire business, if this is the linchpin of your company and you are trusting it to one other company who is specifically, they are motivated, uh, they are motivated by the amount of transactions you're sending through them. All of a sudden, you have no negotiating power with this vendor. They have they have everything because if they increase their rates, you can't do anything about it. They they every time you make a payment, they're going to charge you. You know they have they have full control. So what this does is it gives you the option to negotiate with PSP one and PSP two. It's a ton of control. All of a sudden, the merchant can say like, "Oh, you're you're giving me a bad rate. This other company is giving me a better rate," or you know both of these guys are giving me a bad rate in X Y Z country. So I'm going to add in PSP three, and this is just going to have this is just going to focus on uh, Japan. Let's say, or this is just going to focus on Canada. This is just going to focus on one region. So this is a uh, you you can see as you're building out your payment orchestration layer, it matters to think about auth rates. Like that's the first reason that you probably do this. You want to increase the amount of revenue that that you're bringing in, and then all of a sudden you. The side effect of that is you have all of this negotiating power and you have all of this maneuverability to actually get higher authorization rates by adding in different vendors globally.